Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Living Wholehearted Podcast. We are Jeff and Tara Matson, a husband and wife team who is shrinking the integrity gap in our own lives and helping others do the same. I'm a leadership and organizational development coach, and Tara is a licensed marriage and family therapist. We believe that if you have a following, you are a leader and how you lead matters. Whether you are leading in the home, work, or community, we are bringing you biblical, clinical, and relational wisdom to help you in every relationship that matters most to you. None of us do this perfectly, but we are leaning into the reality of our humanity and profound wisdom of grace. of raising a girl of today's world feels daunting, which is why I'm so grateful for my wife, Tara Matson, and the Helping Moms Raise Confident Daughters courses through from Christian Parenting. In these courses, you'll be guided through eight monthly one-on-one dates and intentional conversations to deep your, deepen your relationship with each other while you help your daughter grow in confidence. When you purchase your course, you'll be equipped with monthly videos to help you understand exactly where your daughter is spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. You'll also get a conversational guide to deepen your relationship during your set one-to-one dates and a downloadable journal to create and strengthen a connection with your daughter through the month. The best part is that there's a course for every age. So no matter what stage your daughter is in, you can have the tools to build a safe and trusted relationship where she knows you can listen and talk about the real issues concerning her. Well, we have a key role uh, to play in shaping how our daughters view themselves and their stories. I know these courses will help you and your desire to raise a confident, godly daughter. So register for your right course today. Visit cpguides.org to select your course today. That's cpguides.org. It's going to be a good day because we have my dear friend, Dr. Michelle Watson Canfield with us today. She is a firehouse, a uh, fire hose is probably what I bet, fire hose of incredible knowledge and wisdom and experience. And I think you're just going to learn a lot from her. We're talking about dads. Obviously, it's Father's Day uh, month. And I just wanted to give you some wisdom, whether you have father wounds, whether you are a father who's wanting to do this well, or you're reflecting back and you're wanting to do some repair with your own daughters. Specifically, we're talking about fathers and daughters today. This is Dr. Michelle's um, expertise, though I think it'll apply wherever you're at in your life. So Dr. Michelle Watson Canfield, she is a national speaker, author, licensed professional counselor of 27 years, and she's the founder of the ABBA Project, a nine-month group forum for dads whose daughters are in their teens and 20s. She writes guest articles regularly for journals and magazines all over the place from the Dad Daughter Friday blog, which is hers, as well as um, you might have seen her in various um, magazines along the way. She's interviewed all over on the radio. She actually has her own podcast called The Dad Whisperer, and you'll want to check that out if you are a dad. Her best-selling book, Dad, here's what I really need from you, a guide for connecting with your daughter. It's heart is followed by her most recent field guide for men. Let's talk conversation starters for dads and daughters. Both of these are available on Audible. And honestly, this woman is just someone you want to have on your side. She speaks. She's kind of one of the only women I know that speaks in the middle of a group of men and keeps their attention. And at the end of the day, you want her on as a friend. Before we get further into that topic, um, I just want you to start with your story, Michelle. Like, how did you end up working with dads in the first place? You know, it goes back to December of 09, reading in Luke 1, who doesn't read there at Christmas time, about how God told, you know, Zechariah that his yet to be born son, John, would help turn the hearts, not the heads, of fathers to their children. I just heard God say, That's what I want you to do, Michelle. And I was like, What? Women had always been my focus, or teens and 20 somethings, especially. So two days later, blow drying my hair, heard the name The Abba Project. Abba meaning daddy in Aramaic, and men love a project. 
Next month, January of 10, I wrote emails to 11 dads whose daughters were my clients at the time, counseling clients in their teens and 20s and said, how would you like to join me once a month for six months to see if there's a change in you, your daughter, and your relationship? And 10 of the 11 dads, Tara said, we're in. And I've had people say, men do not add more to an already full plate unless there is a felt need or a crisis. And so that's how it all started. And since then, you know, honed it to a nine month. It ended up going a year, that first group honed it to a nine month group and did that for 10 years. Now I've moved across the country. Things have changed up a bit. I'm doing podcasting, writing for dads, speaking at men's conferences and blogging every other Friday. So I'm all about equipping dads of daughters to dial into the heart space of their daughters, because I believe we will have a healthier country from the ground up with healthier women. Mm, Amen, sister. Okay, so here we go. Dads won't really move unless they feel kind of that need, that crisis need. So what do you think is at the crux of that crisis that happens for a lot of dads? Um, As you've sat with them and listened to them, um, you sat with the daughters and listened to them, what is that felt need that they're feeling? Oh my goodness, there's so many felt needs that daughters have, but one of them is to be heard. One, One thing that we need as women is to be heard by our dads. We need a soft approach from our dads. We need time and attention with our dads so we don't feel like an afterthought or an inconvenience. And dad, if you want to be a dialed in dad to your daughter, expect to be inconvenienced. But on I could go, but I think you understand a bit of of what my heart is. And I know, Terry, you share the same heart. But really another thing your daughter needs, dad, is for you to soften your tone, for you to drop your anger, for you to validate her emotional wiring and never make fun of her for that. Never put her down for her weight. Oh my goodness, on it goes. But I think that gives men some idea of where we could start this conversation today. Now you told me about a recent Instagram reel that went out. I think it reached over 3 million listeners as of today. And it was about dads and anger. Talk a little bit more about uh, the backstory of that as well as um, set us up for why is this so important when we're talking about dads and daughters? You know, the backstory, again, welcome to Venus. There's always a backstory to the story, but where this came from was a number of years ago, I was in a church service, you know, turn and greet someone near you. And I found out that this dad had a two and a half year old daughter as we shook hands. And he ended up saying to me, oh, you're a father-daughter expert. Tell me everything I need to know in 20 seconds. Go. And I was like, I'll do you one better. And this is what I said on this video, a 47-second video that has now been watched over 3 million times. It has gone viral. And I'm like, this has struck a chord with men and women. A lot of women have written in about this. But here's what I said to that dad then and on this video is that, Dad, your anger will destroy her spirit. Your anger will crush the core of who she is. Your anger will make her shut down. Your anger will make her stop trying. And your anger will be internalized by her where she will believe. Let me say that again. And your anger will be internalized by her where she will believe that she's unlovable and not worthy. So I said to this dad, make a commitment here early on to set a foundation to never respond in anger. And that was the gist of what I said. And it has really, I I would say, impacted and struck a chord with people around the world. And it tells me that this is something we need to be talking about. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I just heard it from another mom who was saying in raising her daughter and her son, they're both emotional about that teen year. You know, they're 13, 14, and they're seeing these emotions come out. But for girls, it's a lot more common for it to be weepy, more of the sentimental, gentler side of the emotions. And then for her son, she sees a lot of it coming out in anger. So when you say, dad, drop your anger, what's and you're going, this is the cost to these girls. Um, the, it, it comes across very different. So how does 
anger, like how does that do more damage? Um, talk practically a little bit about that. And what does that do um, to a daughter? Okay, I've got to tell you a really cool story. In fact, I told this dad, if he's the only one who heard this video, it will have been worth it. And this is a dad who said, I have always sought to control my anger. It never even dawned on me that I needed to drop it. This was a revelation for him, and it was revolutionary for him as well as for me, that I think a lot of you men listening have tried to control your anger. But what the reality is, is that everyone around you can feel it seething out from you. And remember too, dads, that oftentimes, and this is again in my clinical work, I say mad and sad are two sides of the same coin. And that oftentimes your anger is sadness that's been pushed down that you don't want to get in touch with because a lot of men believe that tapping into those what they might deem as weaker emotions of sadness, fear, that gets pushed down, but it's going to come out an anger portal. So dad, it takes a lot of courage to be willing to face your other emotions inside of you besides anger and ask yourself when you're mad, is there anything I'm sad about or anything I'm scared about? Talk that out with someone in your life that's close to you that you trust. Because if you can tap into what's under the anger, that's one way that you will find your anger come down. What was so cool about this one dad, and this is just recently since the video went viral, he said, I don't know how to explain it, but somehow I heard your message differently than I had ever heard you tell me before that I needed to shift how I was responding to my daughters, to my wife, and to people in my life with anger. But somehow this idea of dropping it made more sense. Here's a really cool thing too to add as I was talking this out with my husband who happened to have founded the National Center for Fathering, Dr. Ken Canfield. And he was telling me something that just dawned on him with this topic just yesterday. He said, this idea of drop your anger is almost like a stance of humility for a man to drop a knee, right? Isn't that something we've heard a lot on football fields, drop a knee or somewhere else, like drop your knee means to kind of have a a humility stance and really a stance of respect. And so dad, maybe this concept of drop your anger could be something where you think I need to have more humility. If my daughters or my sons or my wife or ex-wife or other women in my life are saying that I have an issue with anger, I need to listen to them and stop defending my position and take a knee, drop down, and really take a stance of humility where you're willing to hear how your anger is impacting those around you without defensiveness. I think part two to dropping your anger and dropping a knee is you see that that is also a prayer stance. Dad, commit to God this issue of anger without defending it. Ask God as a father to come help you understand where there are roots in your life, where there's anger, where there's roots of anger, because anger is always a signal to you that something deeper is going on. Oh, I love that idea of dropping to your knee, taking a knee, especially for those who love sports and understand what that means. Um, Just from the analogy of it, it's a posture of humility. So good, Michelle. So you talk about triggers and um, your story and how that plays a role. I mean, so much of the scriptures are talking about Um, in your anger, do not sin. So it's not that anger is a bad thing in and of itself. In fact, it's a, um, to use your words, a signal. So talk a little bit more about that. Let me tell you another story. A couple months ago, I got to do an all-day parent university at a church in Oklahoma. What was really cool in that day is that I used an analogy, and this was something God gave me. When I say it's cool, it really wasn't something I came up with. And I think it's a metaphor that many men listening will relate to. If you're driving down the road of life, picture you being a car. So I'm going to do the metaphor between you as a dad and and you being a car. If you're driving down the road and a red light comes on the dashboard, you're not going to get a hammer out and beat the dumb thing and say, I hate red lights on my dashboard. I'm going to either beat the red light to stop or I'm going to pull over and disconnect wires because I hate red lights. 
No, you want that red light to be there to signal you that there's a problem under the hood or under the car that you can't see. And that's a way to think about anger is when something gets triggered in you and you have a response of anger, you can say, okay, I'm just gonna shove my anger down or I'm gonna explode. Neither way is a real helpful way to deal with anger. So another option, dad, would be pull over, take a break, lift up the hood of your car, and you gotta examine the wiring. What's getting triggered inside of me in this moment that's causing me to have a big reaction because it means it's something in you. Oftentimes, it will seem like it's some problem with your kids, some problem with an object, some problem with a person in your life. But really, if you hit a big number on a zero to 10 scale, it's your stuff. Here's another way I like to say it is on a zero to 10 scale, if you hit an eight or a nine or a 10, it's always your own stuff. It's your car. It's the light on your dashboard. And I'm not shaming you. I'm not condemning you. I mean, being transparent, anger is where I go to. I'm an Enneagram one. I tend to go to anger. Anger is something I'm very much in touch with. But when I'm, you know, I would say in a healthy place, I'm in an open place. I'm in a stance of growth or even a stance where I take a knee and I'm willing to be humble, I find that there's something under the anger. Let me tell you a quick story. A couple months ago, my husband and I had a great weekend together. We moved to Arkansas a year and a half ago. We were exploring hot springs. Great weekend together. We're on our way home. And I'm like, okay, I'm catching my breath. I'd planned to come home, unpack in a in a really, I would say, a, a gentle way, you know, a, a way that didn't feel stressful. And I was going to do laundry and journal about my weekend together with my husband and things God had taught me. And on the way home, we get a phone call. And my husband said to one of our sons, sure, come on over tonight. And I was like, what? No, 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 no. And I'm like, you know, giving him the timeout signal. And he's like, what? So he hangs up the phone and I had a big reaction. I hit an eight, nine or 10. You didn't ask me for my opinion. You just made a decision without including me. Well, in his mind, he thought, we've had all this time together. Now let's connect with our kids. My thought was, we've had all this time together and I'm not ready for it to be done. And it was two very, very different responses to the same trigger. And so what was really helpful is as we talked it out, and I was hitting my really big number, is I traced that back, looked under the hood at my own wiring and said, you know, you know with my sexual abuse history that my no wasn't heard by a man. It felt like you didn't hear me say no because now you were trying to talk me into saying yes. Let's be open to company tonight, even if it's our family. I share that story, Dad, to say, when you have a big reaction, an eight, nine, or 10, Use that as an opportunity to say what's really underneath it. There's always something else going on deeper. So where in the Bible specifically do we learn about anger? Talk, talk, draw our attention to what the scriptures say when it comes to what do we do with our anger? You've all heard James 119, I'm sure. Let's, Let's just see what God has to say about anger. One, we know that he has anger. He's written about anger in his book. And in the book of James, here's James 1.19. I love how the message Bible says it. Lead with your ears, follow up with your tongue, and let anger straggle along in the rear. Don't you love that one? How about Colossians 3.1, where God says, fathers, do not exasperate your children to anger. Whoa. Whoa. You know what exasperate means? It's a provoke word. So sometimes, dads, when you come in as the heavy, think about it this way. I've had a lot of men tell me this that I've coached, is they say, when my daughter disrespects her mom, I'm gonna put a stop to that. Dad, are you actually disrespecting your daughter with your angry response when you want her to have more respect and less anger toward her mom? You got to ask yourself, are you modeling to her what controlling anger, dropping anger looks like? Say that you instead said to your daughter, 
my heart is really hurting right now when I hear how you talk to your mom. I know that hurts your mom's feelings to have you come at her and against her. See how you're having the same conversation, but you're not starting with anger. You're dropping your anger. You're not leading with anger. Dad, I would even ask you this question. Let's just say I offered you a million dollars to go one week or one month without having anger. What would you say? My guess is you'd be pretty motivated to drop your anger. So here's my point. Is your daughter a million dollar investment? Is she worth dropping your anger? If you take to heart what I'm telling you over four decades plus now of walking with girls, women, young women, older women. I am a woman. I'm the oldest of four girls. I've coached and mentored women for over four decades. And I can tell you consistently, you will do more damage to her heart, to your daughter's heart, through your anger than anything else. I would hope you would believe me. Believe Tara. We're saying as women, we understand that dads, you're going to have anger. We're going to have anger. But if you've had an angry response, you've got to make amends. So I know you well, Michelle, and you are an action woman. You love to give practical steps. So here we are saying, yeah, don't let your anger be the thing that stands between you and your daughter. Um, it's not bad to feel anger, but it's it's looking at what's underneath the anger. Love that. And I think that's really key for all of us. I think the last piece is maybe leave us with some practical next steps. I'm always about equipping dads to take action. I love doing that on my podcast, The Dad Whisperer. I always end with an action step, a go step. So dad, I want to give you some action steps, some practical ways that you can, I would say, attend to your own triggers, your own anger. Does that sound good? I don't ever want to say change a behavior without giving you a proactive way to respond to your reactive responses. We want to have a proactive strategy. So here you go. Here's some practical ways that you, dad, can attend to your own wiring under the hood of your car when you get angry. You remember with your kids, do you remember how often parents give their kids a timeout as many minutes long as their child's age, right? Three minutes for for a three-year-old, five minutes for a five-year-old. So if you're 50, you need a 50-minute timeout to allow that mid part of your brain that's on fire to calm down So that this front part of your brain, this is where you think and reason and have good judgment can come back online. So that's a practical way, dad, that you can calm your own system inside your body that's on fire. Another way that you can calm that part of your brain is to do what we call bilateral stimulation. It's a right-left activation. You can do it through tapping right and left on your knees. You can do it by crossing your arms and literally going, okay, this is dumb, I know, but you can calm yourself that way. You can go for a run, you can go for a walk, but anything that's that right, left hemisphere kind of rhythm really will help calm that intensity inside your body where you feel like you're going to explode. Let me give you a couple other practical ways, dad. And I'm going to use the acronym DAD. So the first one is decide. You have to decide within yourself that you want to drop your anger. I suppose I could do that for another D, couldn't I? Drop your anger. But decide today, is this something you want to work on? If you are ready for that, then the A is ask. Ask your daughter, ask your son, how could I be a better dad to you? How could I tune into your heart space. Remember, that's what God said has to turn, the hearts of fathers, not the heads. So you ask your, I'm going to say daughter because that's the lane I'm in, but of course this applies to sons. It even applies to your wives, to any women in your life, because we're all daughters. Ask, how could I have softer responses to you? How could I have less anger towards you? You could ask, how has my anger in the past impacted you? How could I respond differently to you in ways that honor you and make you feel safe around me. So there's some options, but ask a question of your daughter in order to hear from her how your anger really impacts her 
and do it without defensiveness. Okay, my last D, it's that decompress. So when you can tell you're activated, take a time out that's as many minutes as your age. You can do right, left hemisphere, bilateral stimulation to calm your own system and then allow yourself to approach your daughter. That's where you can ask questions and really make amends. So dad, you can drop your anger because remember, you've got the Trinity wrapped around. You got the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and they can help you lean into getting underneath it finding what you're sad about, what you're scared about, and then having a conversation where I would say it's more proactive than reactive. Because like you heard me say at the beginning, we will have a healthier country from the ground up. And way too often I hear daughters tell me, I'm sure Tara does too, we hear stories of the impact of dad's destructive anger on the heart and the soul and the spirit of a daughter. And dad, you can take responsibility for that. Make amends today and turn things around. Go dads. Okay, Dr. Michelle, where can people find you and your resources? Well, you can go to my website, drmichellewatson.com, and I've got lots of free resources. You can sign up for my bi-monthly Dad Daughter Friday blog. You can also find links to my books. Got lots of free resources there for you because I'm all about equipping dads to dial into their daughter's heart. And that's where you can find, Dad, here's what I really need from you, a guide for connecting with your daughter's heart that really helps set a foundation so dads can understand their daughters and their wiring better to help decode them. And sometimes I've had dads, even with older daughters, get that book. They both read it side by side. Each chapter is three or four pages. And then dads can say, really, you're wired like this or you think like this? This is what Dr. Michelle said. And I say, yep. Then have a conversation because you have a starting point. Another book, Let's Talk Conversation Starters for Dads and Daughters, where it has five sections where I'm wanting dads to lead their daughters to laugh, to love themselves and others, lead them to look underneath deeper issues, lead them to lament. I want dads to connect with their daughters over grief. And the last section is Lead Her to Listen, where dad flips the script, hands his daughter the book, and she can ask him questions about his life so that she gets to know him more and doesn't always feel like she's on the hot seat. So a couple resources for you dads so that you can dial into your daughter's heart with more precision. And I'd love to hear from you. Let me know how it goes. Let's keep the conversation going. And I also have the Dad Whisper podcast, which is available on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, and Google Podcasts. So you can dial in, you can learn more. And I'm always about either interviewing guests or sharing with you things, even that are in the trenches here with dads that I coach and counsel, and I want dads to be equipped with everything they need to kick things up a notch, to be intentional and consistent with pursuing their daughter's hearts. Thank you for your time. It's such a gift to have this. And I think we're going to have you back on the show later on to talk more about trauma as trauma therapists and being able to talk about more of those triggers. So you'll want to stick around uh, to hear more from Dr. Michelle, but check out her books, check out The Dad Whisperer, And definitely her blogs are full of wisdom, especially if you are a dad raising a daughter today. Now, you know, we talk about courageous girls. We've got Living Wholehearted where we have professional counselors and executive coaches that are coming alongside and helping. We're really with, we're about relationships. Wherever you are at home, at work, in the community, we're helping you with the relationships that matter most to you. So if you need some help, you need a coach, you're a leader who's recognizing that you've got some undercurrent of anger and you want to work on this, then definitely check in with one of our executive coaches. We love to help uh, you in this area, both at work and at home. But maybe also you're recognizing that you've got some deep-seated struggles that you need to address, or maybe you're not sure what's the undercurrent of your anger and you're ready to do some counseling, or maybe you have some repair work that you want to do with a daughter check in with one of our counselors. You can find out those resources at livingwholehearted.com. And then as always, we love to provide you with free resources and leadership tips and how to become a wholehearted person and learn to live and lead with integrity from the inside out. So check us out at livingwholehearted.com and sign up for our monthly newsletter. If you like what you're listening to every week here at the Living Wholehearted Podcast, We would love it if you'd leave us a review. In fact, your reviews help us. They help us grow. They help others learn about us. 
And we're just so grateful to be a part of your life each week. So grateful. And if you want to give us any tips or feedback, we're always open to learning and growing as well. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful Father's Day um, and have been able to recognize that wherever you're at in your journey, God uses it. God uses all of our story. He won't waste it. So the biggest part of our integrity is not doing life perfectly. It's about coming before God with all of our mind, our heart, our soul, and our bodies, and being honest before Him and with another human being. So don't take this today as shame or guilt or to turn it off, but help it to propel you towards a more healthy, wholehearted living with every relationship that you say you love the most. All right, we'll see you next week. And until then, be the leader you would follow. This podcast is powered by Living Wholehearted, Courageous Girls, and the Christian Parenting Podcast Network. Thank you for joining us in this critical movement of shrinking our integrity gaps between what we preach and live.